everyone, it's Melissa Bova, Vice President of Government Affairs at the Pennsylvania Restaurant and Lodging Association. All of our members receive PRLA's quarterly magazine, and in that magazine, we have a legislator spotlight where we ask legislators questions uh, about their position, about their likes and dislikes. We've decided to change things up a little bit, and in this case, do an interview. Uh, and today, we have the new chairman of the House Liquor Control, actually not so new anymore, no. uh, <laughs> Representative Jeff Pyle from Armstrong County. We feel that the good chairman is best experienced via a video as opposed to the written word. So we're gonna learn a little bit more about him in the next few minutes. Uh, and I hope that you learn something uh, and maybe are a little ent entertained along the way. So Mr. Chairman, we're gonna start it off easy. Give it to me, Boba. What made you want to run for office? Um, at the time, I was a, a high school teacher, and I just moved back to my hometown, and I was just shocked at how much everything had gone to pot. I mean, you never saw broken windows and graffiti and stuff like that in my town. So a federal grant came along that Congressman Murtha grabbed to buy 130 trees, and my borough got them and they stuck them behind this fence for like months. And I finally went to one of the councilmen and said, what are you doing with those? How about I get them put in the ground for you? And they go, well, how are you gonna do that? So I put a tablet up on my classroom door and said, who wants to go plant trees Saturday? And about 130 of them showed up. So I thought that was really cool. It, it really dressed up our rails to trails. So I went to the mayor at the time and I asked him, John, would you write a nice letter for these kids they could use for trade school or jobs or college or whatever? And he told me he was too busy. And it made me angry. <laughs> so uh, I decided I would run for the office so the letter would get written. And I ran. I became the only Republican in Ford City history. And I wrote the letter. And here we are. Years and years <laughs> later. So with that, you have chaired over your time in the House a few different committees, sure. uh, one being gaming control. Yes. Uh, but this year, you took on the House Liquor Control yes. Committee. Did you choose that committee? Were you given that committee? What brought you into this chairmanship? We're not really given a choice. It's seniority-based. The speaker called and he said, we're looking at you for one of these three positions. And, and I said, oh, liquor control, I could do that. And he goes, can you handle liquor? And I told him, you don't know anybody that can handle liquor like I can, speaker. And he went, then you're our guy. And, and here we are. Here we are. <laughs> so this committee is a little bit different from some other committees. So what do you, what is the best part about this committee and what is kind of the most frustrating part, if anything? The best part's the ability to just talk to all 25 of them at once, Republican, Democrat, male, female, old, young, and just say, look, this is, this is the bill we're going to be considering. This is what the bill's intention is. You know, what do you think? And you throw it out there for all of them to discuss and, and roll around, and, and I think you get a better product out of that, you know, and, and, and again, Chairman Deasy is just great to work with. And, uh, you know, I can go and, hey, Dan, we want to do this bill. Do you have one you want to run? Um, and we try to do that. We try to run equal amounts of Republican and Democrat bills because liquor is not really one of the traditional combat yeah. committees, you know, like approach. I was on that for seven years making budgets. That's a combat committee. Energy can get very heated at times. I was there. This doesn't have to be like that, you know, and we all win whenever we turn out good product. So anything know. frustrating? Honestly, it's been a good experience. I haven't had that. He's only a few months in. Don't worry. Yeah. Give it time. <laughs> No, honestly, it's been, I, I would give it all A's. Okay, we're going to move off of liquor. Are there any other key legislative issues that you see happening this year? Uh, shale tax <sighs> is floating out there year after year. Minimum wage, tipped wage. Uh, there's all these policies and ideas, I think, from the governor. Right. What big ticket issues do you see happening, if anything, he's gonna this make year? Another, he's going to make another run at shale. There's been talk of minimum wage moving, but I haven't seen a whole lot of flesh behind it. You know, just talk. It's hard to say. I mean, we've, it is a new house. Yep. 
um, and they've got new ideas and, and they want to go with them. And as a chairman, my job is to wait for the bills the speaker sends to me and try to get them out of committee and hopefully position well for a successful vote on the floor. If that goes down, then I have the opportunity to go over to the Senate and talk to my buddy Chairman Stefano. It's a lot of respect, you know, yep. between the people on that committee. That's a good segue. I have one easy question, and then we're going to get to the last two hard dun, dun, ones. Dun, I dun. saved the hard ones for last. Great. You were first elected in 2004, um, and it seems that things have kind of changed in the legislature, yeah. especially over the last five to seven years. Why does it seem, and it just feels like there is more gridlock and an inability to compromise? That seems like something you yourself don't really believe in, but it no. feels like there is that gridlock occurring in the legislature. Why do you think that is? I think, uh, uh, well, the obvious is the left has moved further left and the right has moved further right, and it's broadened the divide between. But, you know, my, my, my grandma always used to tell me, I got to be bigger than the situation. And yeah, it'd be real easy to fall into that. Oh, it's a Democrat bill. We're not touching it. Leave us alone. But, but does that move anybody forward? No. It, good ideas are not limited to Republican or Democrat. You know, I mean, they, they come from everywhere. Okay, the last two are the hardest ones. Are the Steelers going to win the Super Bowl in 2020? Absolutely. <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> You ask me that? I'm just asking. I don't know. Maybe they need another build-up year. We're from the with the you know. great football team. <laughs> we cheer the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'll stop. <laughs> this is your final question. If you had to choose one of the following to be able to consume for the rest of your life, and you could not have the others ever again. Just one? And yeah, yes, and you can't have the others. What would you choose? A, corn dogs, B, Maker's Mark, C, Cheetos. You can only yes. pick one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, well, that, that's tough, Melissa. It's, <laughs> corn dogs are like one of my eight food groups, <laughs> along with crunchy, spicy, hot, and good. Maker's Mark, you, we could probably cut me right now and fill a glass of Maker's Mark. But Cheetos are saving my life. Totally. Have you gotten an endorsement from Cheetos yet? No. And I wrote them a very nice letter, and their lack of response is very disappointing. I was diagnosed with massive renal cell carcinoma in October 2017 with a mass inside my chest roughly the size of four inches of two by four. They tried some drugs at first that didn't work, and they, they finally got me onto immunotherapy, and we started experiencing good reactions. Well, the first time I was in the hospital in the chemo lab, they said, oh, you're going to be here for like five hours. I fell asleep at like the two hour mark. And I woke up, the nurse is like, and there's nobody else in yeah. there. I'm like, oh man. She goes, you're about halfway done. You're going to be here for two and a oh half more God. hours. Would you like a snack? And I said, yeah, I would. And she came back and she had this gigantic cake pan, like out of a school cafeteria. And it had one little wee snack bag of Cheetos on it. And I went, I'll have the Cheetos. So just then, all these miraculous test results. So Optivo and Cheetos. I appreciate y'all being there. And because uh, there's a lot of topics that are new to me. I mean, I never in a million years would have thought there was a hotel license being unused. But it's a big state, and I need guys like you to tell me these things. We appreciate the open door policy that you have uh, in the communication. And as you know, PRLA has, represents a lot of different interests, and we never want to be the association of no unless we have to. So we look forward That's to— That's much appreciated. They don't put me in there to kill bills. They put me in there to move bills. Yep. So that's what we try to do. Well, we look forward to working with you. Ma'am, the pleasure is all thank mine. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and thank you to everyone who tuned in for our first video interview. And hopefully we will have more, maybe not as exciting, uh, but more in the future. Have a great day.